In this video, I'm going to show you my full color grading process in DaVinci Resolve. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada, and I specialize in sports videography. And recently I've been getting into color grading a lot more. Like I always really enjoyed color grading and doing so in Premiere. I even have another tutorial on this channel where I do color grade in Premiere. But specifically, I've been deep diving DaVinci Resolve and really taking advantage of the powerful tools that I have over there. I purchased the premium version and have just been going like all in on it. Now, obviously, you can do great stuff with the free version of Resolve, but that was kind of just the kick I needed to really get going and learn this software. So I've been learning it and I want to make an updated tutorial on how I color grade my football videos because I've been doing it differently recently and I've been putting more content out on Instagram showcasing this color grading. So I figured this was a great time for me to refresh that old video and show you my current color grading process when I'm trying to get something looking really good. Now, before we actually get into like the whole creative bit of color grading, I want to go over some basics here. So lift, gamma, gain, and offset. This isn't really like shadows, midtones, and highlights, but it kind of is. So let's create some nodes here. If we just go option S a few times, we'll get a few nodes and I'm just gonna quickly apply a Rec 709 conversion LUT to this. We will do this again later and I'll talk you through it, but I just wanna get this on right now so that I can actually show you something. So adjusting your lift, if we were to drag this to the right, is the same thing as grabbing the black point on your curves and lifting it up. It has the same effect and you can see that in your waveform and just the image. Your gamma is like your midtone. So moving your gamma to the right, we'll do that. And it's equivalent to putting a point in the middle of this curve, more or less, maybe a little bit more to the side and just lifting it up. And the entire curve is gonna bend up. And then your gain, if you move that to the right, is the equivalent of grabbing the white point here at the end of the curve and pulling it in. It does the same thing. And you can see that in both the waveform and the image. Are we recording? I, had a bit of a panic attack in my head there. We are recording, good for me. Whereas the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, if you were to adjust those, your shadows are only going to impact the dark parts of your image. And it's kind of the equivalent on the curves of doing something like this, where you're bringing up that dark part or bringing down that dark part, but you're not touching the rest of the image. So when we were adjusting the lift, you're moving this part and the entire curve across is coming up or going down, however you adjust it. But when you touch your shadows, this bottom part where all the dark tones are is already getting lifted. Maybe this is a better way of demonstrating it. It's kind of getting lifted or dropped. But the rest of your image up here, no matter what you do to your shadows, is staying the same. And this stays true for your highlights. So if you were to adjust your highlights, it would be something like this, where you're just playing with these bright parts and making them really bright or making them not so bright, but you're not adjusting the rest of the curve. And if you play with your gain, you're kind of moving everything. And then offset just controls the whole image. So if I bring offset all the way to the right, it gets really bright. If I bring offset all the way to the left, it gets really dark. And you can see everything on my waveform just move up and down as I control the offset. And now let's talk about nodes quickly. So I've applied something here. Let's just reset this grade. So nodes are kind of like layers in Premiere if that's what you're used to. And that's what I'm used to coming over to resolve here just for color grading. But if you adjust something in one node, it's going to apply to all nodes going forward, but not any of the nodes behind it. So I can make an adjustment. Let's make a temperature adjustment there. It's very orange. If I come to my next node and adjust the tint, let's go like that. And let's also adjust the contrast. That's just, this is a terrible image. This looks like something that a four year old made, but you can see that our first adjustment here applies to the first node and all the nodes going forward. Our second adjustments here apply to the second node and all the nodes going forward, but not the first node. So that's kind of like how these stack up in layers. So let's just undo all of this, reset these. And now my actual workflow for how I use these nodes, I completely built off of Donna Did It's color grading tutorial in DaVinci Resolve, which is one of the first ones that I watched when I was starting this whole process of learning. And it was really helpful. 
So I'm gonna label things a little bit differently than him, but we're gonna label them just the same. So this is gonna be our white balance node. And this node is going to be for exposure. So let's just call this conversion. And this node is going to be our creative node. So these two shots, I've already color graded these twice, but we're not gonna make reference back to them. This one is color graded with my football video LUT pack on my website. And this one is with a Rec. 709 conversion LUT straight in DaVinci. So let's start by using the football video LUT pack and then we'll use the Rec. 709 conversion LUT. But I'll show you my process for both. So let's right click here and we'll go to LUT and I've already loaded my LUTs in. So we'll go to my football video LUT pack. This is shot in S-Log3 and it's shot during the day. So let's pick the S-Log3 day LUT and that is where we start. Now we wanna to go to our white balance here. We're just gonna grab this and tap on a part of the image that is white. So I'm gonna pick this player shorts here and that's given us a small tweak. So you can see before we were a little blue, after we're a little bit more to the middle, but not a big white balance tweak. We were pretty close. And then we're gonna to go to exposure and let's bring the gain down so that nothing is clipping. And it'll bring the lift down as well. And this looks pretty evenly spread out. You can see most of our highlights are in this upper echelon, but not touching. And most of our shadows and dark areas are at this lower line, but not completely crushed at the bottom. So we're going to start with this. And then we're going to get into grading this. I think the first thing that we need is some more saturation. So let's just pump that up a bit. And you can see as we saturate it, everything looks good, but the skin tones get way too oversaturated. So we will pump that up, but we're gonna add a layer node. So you can right click and choose add node and then select add layer, or you can just use option and L and that'll add a layer node. And the way these work, everything in this bottom node is going to be unaffected by whatever happens in this top node. So we can come to our qualifier and we're just gonna qualify the skin tones. Hit shift and H after you've clicked on a skin tone to actually see what you've selected here. And we're gonna pull this out and try to get all the skin tones in this selection here. If you see here, we'll take this off. This area here on this player's arm is very bright, so it's not currently in our selection. So we need to spread the luminance value out and grab that. And that is more or less all of our skin tones. We've also worked in some of the orange lights in the background and that's fine. But there we can see here, we just have our skin tone. So let's label this skin. And now we're going to do this color grade, less these skin tones. So here we can keep on pulling the saturation up and it's going to saturate our whole image, but not the skin tones, which we can adjust independently. So we'll bring that up. The skin tones honestly look pretty good. Maybe I'll give them a little bit of saturation, but not much. So I think that's already a pretty good look. We scroll through our image here. There's also these yellows in the roof of the arena here, and I wanna get rid of those, but we're gonna do that a little bit later. So let's just scroll back a little bit. And I wanna work on this guy's jersey because this team's color is green. Like they're really big into green and this isn't exactly the shade of green that they have in their logo. So I want to tweak this to be like less turquoisey and more like a true green, like you would imagine the color of grass to be. Click right here at our mixer and then click option S to add another node. We'll just drag these all back, put this down. Let's label this and just call it greens. And again, we're going to use our qualifier and let's select all the greens here, shift and H to see what we're actually selecting. Let's bump that over to not get the blues. There we go. Let's see if we can, how much of the jersey we can get without actually getting the people in the background. That would be nice. But I understand they're all wearing green, so. I don't feel like drawing a million masks and that's, that may just have to be what it is. That is pretty good. Turning the luminance down kind of eliminated all this background stuff and just gave us the greens on the jerseys here and a bit of the pom-poms and things from the cheerleaders on the side. So now let's bring the saturation of the greens up and we definitely wanna shift the hue more to be green, kind of funny. You can like just make them like a fully blue team, just completely change who's playing. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Let's 
just fully push this into the greens. And I want to make this like less lime green, a little bit darker. So let's bring the lift down a bit. Maybe the hue shift is a bit too much. Yeah, probably there is where I want to be. And let's bring the gain. Let's actually bring the gain down a little bit as well. There we go. So you can see what the jersey looked like before. Kind of blue now that I'm looking at it. And what they looked like after, which is like a much truer green in my opinion. So now we can play this clip through. We got the player popping off the background and the greens. And like I said, I don't like how this roof has like a beige tint to it. That is the natural tint of the roof. But I just think that it draws away from the player as he's standing here with it right behind him. So let's option S to add one more node. And we're going to call this yellows. And once again, we'll use the qualifier and we're gonna qualify these yellows. So shift and H to see what we're working with here. And that's pretty good. Let's just click this little plus thing and select some more areas to make sure that we've got everything in. That looks pretty good to me. We have the yellows on his arm even. And it's like, it feels like there's like some yellows all throughout the shadows in this shot. So we're gonna tweak those. And let's just bring the saturation on them down so it's more white than it is yellow. And you can see here, we went from yellow to white. And this to me really just draws your eye in on the blue smoke in the background and the green jerseys and gets rid of all the other colors. And that's what I want. I want you to focus on this player and nothing else. And by eliminating those distracting colors, we're doing that. And with this node tree built out, this is the final shot that we have. And you can see how that compares to the original one I did. I ended up doing it pretty similarly both times. I actually think that my second pass, the greens look better than I did when I wasn't recording, just kind of like giving it a shot so I'd have something for you to reference. So uh, yeah, good on me. I think that looks really nice. And now let's do something similar, but using a Rec. 709 LUT that is built in to DaVinci Resolve. So again, option S a few times, and we're gonna do the same node structure. Now let's add our conversion LUT. So you wanna click on our conversion node and then click on effect up here, and we're searching for color space transform. I've already searched for it here, as you can see, but if you just type that in, you'll get it. Drag it on. And then our input color space is going to be Sony S Gamut 3 dot Cine, since that's the profile I was shooting in. Our input gamma is, if I can find S, S log 3. And our output color space is going to be, well, my timeline is set to Rec. 709, but just to be sure, let's just put that on Rec. 709 and we can get rid of effects. And here is our conversion LUT applied. Pretty straightforward. And again, we're going to white balance. So let's grab our picker here and we're going to pick off this player shorts. Our exposure is actually pretty good. So let's leave that. And now we'll get into the creatives again. And this is gonna be pretty similar. So again, I just wanna bring the saturation up. I actually think that I'm going to bring the lift down, not too much, just a bit. And let's bring the gamma down as well. Cool. We can see here the shot gets a lot brighter. So I'm going to leave this for now. Maybe we'll color grade this frame and option L and we're going to select our skin tones. So you can see here, because I've got everything selected in my layer node, nothing from this grade is applying. So we'll select the skin tones and now only what we have selected is not being impacted by the above grade. Again, we'll make a selection and we will tweak these skin tones, obviously, but let's bring the saturation up on this a little bit more. And then the skin tones, we'll bring the saturation up again but not as much and let's actually look at our vector scope and see if we're on the skin tone line and we are right there is kind of where that skin tone line is going to line you want this hue you see if i tweak the hue it goes like all over the place you want that line to be like right there in between these two on this skin tone line and now we can even make some tweaks to the skin tone so let's make them a little bit darker maybe take some saturation out Bring them down like this and again i want to make some tweaks to the greens so let's come after our mixer quickly qualify the greens like we did last time and then we're going to pump the saturation up not too much just a bit 
And we're definitely going to shift the hue to be a little more green. That might even be a bit of too much of a shift. Maybe there. Good, just a teeny tiny shift. And then we'll darken these up a little. Perfect, I don't think my qualification was good here. Let's tweak that. Yeah, there's like too much splotchiness. Let's fix that up. Now, this looks pretty decent. I just wanna show you one more cool tool that I use sometimes, kind of as an alternate to the qualifier. So if you click on the color warper here, you can take this arrow and actually just grab any part of your image and then it creates a dot on the color warper as you see at the bottom. And if you drag that dot further to the outside of the circle, it will become more saturated. If you drag it further to the inside of the circle, it will become less saturated. And if you drag it left or right in the circle, like clockwise or counterclockwise, the hue will shift. So I've grabbed this jersey and I can make it more saturated. I can change the hue of it however I want and really just getting get it looking the way that I like. And I actually forgot to label these. So let's label this skin and let's label this greens. And we can even use this color warper on the blue tones here. So if I grab the arrow here and I grab some of these blue tones, I can pull them to be more saturated and then tweak them to whatever shade I want. So if I wanted to like really play into the green here, I could tweak this to be like green green like this. I think that's a little much. So we're gonna go back, but let's grab them and pull them a bit more saturated and a bit more turquoise so that the player pops off of them. Maybe something like that. All right, and now similarly, I will quickly desaturate our yellows here using the qualifier as we did last time. And there we go. So this is our full shot color graded from scratch. And then this is our full shot color graded with my football LUTs that you can get on my website, shameless plug. But anyway, you tell me which one you like better. So we have Rec 709 and LUT. I think they both look really good. Something to be said for both of them. They are certainly two different looks. I'm pretty happy with both of these. And overall, I'm just happy with the way my color grading has looked in DaVinci Resolve. I think it's made a big difference to my workflow and just allows me to make images look more like how I imagine them in my head. And I think as time goes on, I'm gonna get even better with it. And I'm probably also gonna have to revisit this video in like a year's time because I'm sure I will look back on this and just be miles ahead of where I am now. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. If you liked the way my LUTs look, you can grab them on my website, www.petersorellis.com. I have stuff for daytime and nighttime, and I may even do another color grading tutorial, but focusing specifically on nighttime footage and also the noise reduction process and all that that I use in that. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments. I always love talking to you guys down there. And that's gonna be all for this one. So until next time, peace.